Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day to all our viewers. Selamat datang, Hatsrish Bill Coburn and welcome to the International and Domestic Virtual Colloquium Komat 2022. Okay, by Institute of Teacher Education International Languages Campus or better known as IPGKBA with the team Going Global Interna Internationalizing Education. I am Humaira Hadza, your moderator, a German lecturer in IPGKBA I will be hosting this interesting session for today. And we hope you will stay tuned till the end of this session because we have a lineup of notable speakers. And for today's forum, get your game on. And before we get to know them, allow me to lay out a few housekeeping. And firstly, everyone who attends this webinar series will be given an e-certificate after each session. Therefore, do not forget to register yourself now. The registration link is on the screen. Secondly, we would love to hear from you during today's presentation. And if you have any questions for our panels, please feel free to send it through the chat box down below and the speakers will answer your questions at the end of our session. If you don't answer your questions, we will be sure to follow up afterwards. And last but not least, it will be much appreciated if you could share to this webinar with your social networks. So let's get started. The novel of coronavirus has created unprecedented challenges and that was unforeseeable for two years ago. For example, we have to do virtual classes and online meetings and briefings and so on. And here in IPGKBA via this mini forum, we will bring these two panels to discuss the impact of COVID-19 in teaching and learning German as foreign language virtually and how they make the virtual classes fun. Now, allow me to introduce our speakers for today. Let's begin with Che Ani Suraya Binti Juraini. Che Ani Suraya is one of our outstanding ex-students of PDPP German October 2020. And she obtained, okay, that is Anne Suraya. She obtained her Bachelor's Art of German Language from University Putra, Malaysia. Her first real teaching experience was when she did her teaching practical as a German language teacher at uh, Sekolah Menengah Sains Kuala Selangor Kusas. And currently, she is working as a German language teacher and tutor in order to share her passion and interest of German language. And next, we have another one of our excellent ex-students of PDPP German 2020, Puan Fatin Fatiha Binti Hassan Al Azam. Okay, that is Puan Fatin Fatiha. Okay, she graduated in 2015 from University Putra, Malaysia, and she started her career as technical training officer, teaching German language for both diploma students and German A-level preparatory program. GAP students at German Malaysian Institute Bangi. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's get on with the topic of today's forum, Get Your Game On. Okay, to start the ball rolling, if you guys could share with us, how was COVID-19 affected you as a student and also during your practicum days? Maybe we can start with uh, Miss Ani Suraya first. <laughs> Okay, hello on Guten Morgen, each Bunsha and Alle. So, as a student, I was challenged not only physically but also mentally, as it was really not easy to adapt with online learning at first. But luckily, we can adapt to changes with the advancement of technology. It was never easy to have group discussion, you know, weekly when all my classmates are coming from different location and they are all remote. But thanks to technology, my friends and I managed to ace all of our project and assignment. And the same thing goes with my practicum. So um, with technology, I think we could have classes and discussion despite the situation and location of the students. Okay. Anis, so maybe we can to... proceed. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, maybe we can proceed with uh, Miss Fatin Fatiha. Maybe you can share your experience a little bit. Okay. Hello, good morning, and Allah. Good morning. Okay, so uh, regarding that question, 
I agree with Miss Anisuraya. Uh, before I joined PDPP, I was busy. Uh, I was working uh, at JMI, busy with my uh, A-level students. They were preparing for their big examination, Cambridge Internationals. So at that moment, we it was very difficult for us, very challenging because you know we have to adapt with the new norms. But at the moment, I was a teacher, so I think, oh, it's okay. You can do this. But once I became a student of IPG, I totally understand how my student felt. It was very challenging. It can be very exhausting. And <clears throat> we are not physically tired, but we are mentally drained because uh, our friends are far away. Our lectures are far away. We have to work. We have to discuss online. So it's like it, it is something new for us. But I am really thankful. Uh, to have such reliable and helpful friends, lecturers, because I think they helped me a lot um, learning new things, new technology, and also exploring all the new possibilities. So I believe that because of that, the pandemic has made me a better person to work under pressure. And I think um, because of that, I tried to give my best during my practicum to make sure that my students enjoy learning foreign languages and learning through online. So that is my experience. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Fatin Fatiha. Okay, so both of you had your practical previously during pandemic era. So do you guys have anything that can be shared with me and all of our viewers in, uh, in terms of uh, teaching and learning German as a foreign language? Miss Annie? Oh, yes, yes. All right. So during our first week of practicum, I would say it was very hard to build a good rapport and uh, relationship with my students because, as you know, we were having fully online classes. So it was quite difficult for me to get to know them personally. Why? Because most of them will switch off their camera and will be really passive in re learning, which means I will never know their feedback, I will never get to know their reactions because yes, fully online classes. Hence, what did I do? I tried to make bonds with my students by asking them questions of the day before I started my classes. And these questions are really trivial and very uh, little things, I would say, so that I can get to know my students better. For example, there is one day I asked my student, um, what is your favorite social media? And then they will try to write the answers. I give them maybe like five minutes to write the answers. And the other day I also ask, what are your favorite things to do after classes? And some other day I ask, what are your favorite songs? And many other things. So after I do this, after a few weeks, I noticed that most of our students, our young students, especially are very interested in games, in social media, in songs, and they are also really talented and they are really interested in things that are really interactive that involve involving them in learning. For example, Roblox, Minecraft, Dota, Spotify, YouTube, you name it, they, they know everything. Hence, this part, the idea to include games for my students because as you can see, it does not ensure learning progress, but it is also um, really engaging and interactive. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Anisraya. Maybe we can go with the second panel, uh, Ms. Fatin Fatiha. Okay, so as for me, um, same like Ms. Anis, uh, I had my practicum during the pandemic. And as far as I can remember, I was only able to go to school for only two to three weeks out of 10 weeks. So imagine that I cannot see my students at first and I only managed to see them at the end of my practicum. And I personally believe that creating bonds is important with the students, but bear in mind it's not the overly attached kind of bonds, yeah? Um, because we have to remember that German language is not the main subject in the school, okay? They do, not all of them going to take German language for SVM, okay? So some of them might feel that they have to take this subject because they have no other choice. So some of them really eager to learn something new. Yes, this is what I want. I want to learn a new language so maybe I can further my uh, study in Germany, okay? So as a teacher, and bear in mind, I cannot see them. I, I cannot get to know them. So it's hard for me to create the bond only through 
cameras only for computer and stuff. Okay, so as a teacher, I think I have to find a way to attract them to learn new foreign language, right? And uh, knowing these students around age 13 to 17, okay, I know that, okay, uh, I think we have to include games in our class because if we learn, because for the first few weeks, <clears throat> for the first few weeks was very challenging, you know, because same as Anis, we face the same problem, which the students are passive, okay, maybe because they are sharing devices so they cannot switch on, uh, switch on their cameras and then it's hard to get feedback from them because they, sometimes the background are so loud, we can hear them screaming here and there and then we can hear the siblings are crying so it's hard for them to participate in class and then uh sometimes i feel like i'm the one who is do all the talking okay no response no feedback everything and i believe that okay this i cannot do like this this is not going to work out i have to find something interesting to do which is i have to include some games in my teaching so that the student you know, can understand better and can participate in your class. So, yeah, that is my experience. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Fatin Fatiha. So, I believe Miss Anis and Miss Fatin Fatiha have something prepared and something that can be shared with all of the viewers. So, maybe we can start with Miss Anis first before we proceed with uh, Miss Fatin Fatiha. Okay, sure. Okay. Oops. All right. Okay. Can you see my slide now? Is okay. I believe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Okay. So thank you from Myra for your introduction. So I think we can start with our presentation. So we are staying on this topic. Get your game on. So I will talk about best practices during my practicum. Okay. So we can get started. But before that, allow me to introduce myself first. So. Uh, hello on guten tag and alle. So my name is Anis. You can call me Anis for short. And I think I teach German language for my job, but also for fun. And I like watercolor books and cat. So these are all my patients. Okay, next. So today I will talk about few subtopics which I divided earlier. First, I will talk about the the overview of the school that where I did my practicum and then the knowledge that I gained during IPG, the innovation and practices and last but not least the comments and reflections during my practicum. So I hope I can share something with my viewers at home. So let's get started with the overview of the school. So as Frau Myra mentioned earlier, I did my practicum at Scholar Mena Science Kuala Selangor in Selangor and it is also known as Kusas and it is a boarding school located in Selangor. And yeah, as you can see, if you Google this location, the Google map will provide you this uh, image. You can see that it's a quite a big and spacious school and it is surrounded by nature. And I quite like that at first. So when well, I teach uh, the German language and the duration is eight hours per week, I teach German language for almost 10 weeks where I did my practicum during that time. And my students consist of Form 1 and Form 4, and they're really, really talented and passionate. And the total number of students that I taught is 56 students. So altogether, 56 students learning German with me. So that is the overview of the school. And I also managed to get to know wonderful teachers from there, and I get to get to know them personally and their patient in teaching are also the same with us. And then I will talk a little bit about the knowledge that I gained during IPG. As you know, during my, during I did my PDPP program, I learned a lot of theoretical practices as well as um, practices that I believe is really, really usable, really, really um, meaningful to me as a teacher, as a teacher in process. Okay, we learn not only theory of education, but we also learn about pedagogy. And last but not least, the most important one is classroom management. So uh, I will move on to uh, to brief a little bit about the one of the most educational theory that I learned. So this is about Gardner's multiple intelligence. So as you know, um, Gardner's multiple intelligence highlights the student's ability to learn not only by 
memorizing but he also compromised other intelligence other students intelligence such as musical skills interpersonal skill as well as linguistic intelligence hence this is why i include other um other videos for example when we i want to teach my german language sometimes i learn i teach with songs we can sing together with my students because as you know not all students can learn by reading and not all students can learn by seeing some learn better with audios and same goes other method that i use by learn by doing which in order to get the students to not make the mistake sometimes i teach them how to use the right format so in this example how can you say the correct uh, way to say in the german time that's the sticker format and this is i give them example what to do and what not to do okay and last but not least i also um, make sure that i include videos in my lesson plan so that they can get to get the gist of it so the stigma here is a uh, multrenum or we say um how the German separate the ways. So if I do all the talking, the students might not get, might not understand it at all. So I, what I do, I show them a, a video first, a short video to introduce how the German people do their um, waste separation, for example. Okay, enough with the theory. Now about the pedagogy, of course, I also learned about, in IPG, I learned about the strategy, the 21st century learning and the most important is the value. So in order to create my lesson plan, I usually make sure that I mix, I do a mixture of contextual learning and also project-based learning. Personally, I love to use this because I feel like I inviting my students to come into my lesson, to come into my class. So it's not like I'm the one who only do the talking, but also my students participate as well. And other element of 21st century learning is like by doing brainstorming. As in a brainstorming, we can see what are inside my students' minds. So I really love these activities. And last but not least, I also prefer to do group presentation because this is where we can see and we can evaluate my the students' progress. How are they adapting with the new knowledge and so on? And next, I because I teach German, of course, the value is the language, which is I ensure that my students use the proper language. Um, language choices in order to communicate with others and also ICT technology and also the value that is also um, will help their character development for example tolerance and respect so this is all the pedagogy that I learned during my IPG when I did my study at IPG and so I will give you an example here for example we did a theme of social media so as you know social media is uh, really an actualist tema which is like topic that we will do every day i mean not only for us teachers but also for students and to in get into this topic first i will make a brainstorming so the brainstorming here i use the app's name mentimeter so the fragment the fragment here is fast mark man in the social media or in english we can say what does man do in a social media and then i will give them time maybe five minute times to brainstorm how one can use social media. So as you can see, there are many different answers, different interesting answers and how they perceive social media. For example, one said to post our OOTD. And then the second one, chatting with our friends. The next is the next trends folder, which means to follow a new trends and also closest video answer, which means to watch short videos. So I believe they know what the social media is. After I get to get to know what is inside their mind, I give them a task and the task is that they have to create or maybe to discuss together in a group how to create an app that might be useful for them, that is meaningful for the students. And they uh, during that class, I remember there will be around six or seven groups. And there are many new ideas. So during this time, I can see that they are really um, passionate about this topic. So I give them platform using the Jamboard so that they can discuss their idea together and how, on how to develop their apps, what would they, they like to do and why. So they give their reasoning. And then during that time, they do also did their presentation and all their ideas and activities, I would say really um, something that beyond my expectation. 
So the value that I gain during activity is first, of course, the language, how they present, how they talk, how they discuss in the group, and also the ICT element. And last but not least, also the creativity. And then I will also talk a little bit about the classroom management. So this is really important in order to ensure that um, the classes will go well. First, of all, we must setting up rules and behavior expectation. Uh, in this situation, I believe that teachers have authority to be firm, but also to be flexible in the classroom. For example, I list down only three simple rules. For the first rule is when you want to speak, just speak on, uh, just switch on your mics. And when you don't have anything to say, please switch on so that you will not um, disrupt, uh, disturb other students. And second, please be punctual, which is really important. And last but not least, house of government. House of government homework, so they must do their homework. And then the other things that I did for classroom management is, of course, the reward system. The students really, um, so you know, the, the student quite like of this reward system. So they will be rewarded or deducted for every behavior. So this is the rule that we discussed together. If some students did, participated that of course I give parts but if some student didn't do their homework then of course I will deduct the points. In this app I will use class dojo and it is quite easy to use and also really user friendly. Okay next I will proceed on to the innovation and practices that I did during practicum. So as I mentioned to Frau Myra and also Puan Fatin Fatiha earlier there are also challenges that we face during the practicum. Okay, um, I think most of us can relate to this problem um, that the students are very passive to online learning. I think all teachers can relate to this because we cannot see them and we cannot see their expression, their feedbacks, cannot see their also as well as their behavior in the classroom. So it is quite difficult for us to see if they are learning or not. And then how did I uh, come up with a solution is by providing interactive activities and games such as flashcard, puzzle, and also memory games. So I make sure that I will use this in my classroom, especially in when we want to learn vocabularies, to teach German vocabulary so that I can see that, okay, this is my student and they are doing their work and they are actually learning. And the effect is, I can see that it can promote engaging learning, learning environment. So this is a few of apps that I use during my online practicum, my, my online classes. First, the flashcard method. So we, before I proceed to the theme of the day, I will introduce them with a few words. Sometimes it is not more than 20. The maximum I will do is 20 words altogether. So I will use flashcard to teach and this app I use name is Quizlet. After we go through of the flashcard together, I will ask them to do the find the pair activities, which means they have to click the links and then they have to find the correct words in English and also in German. This is also the app called Quizlet so that here we can see that the students can learn and they can improve their memories in order to memorize this word. And then I, in order to include games in my lesson plan, I also use puzzle. So this is a puzzle that I did using Jamboard and also another app. So it is, uh, I use this puzzle. Uh, we play puzzle usually before we do our classes so that um, first they can get the fun of, of doing this and then they have to guess what is that. So in this, for example, in this activity, I do puzzle for the Stima Berufa, which means jobs. And then after they solve the puzzle together, of course, in a group, so I ask them to search what is that job. And then um, the student managed to answer here, the maler or the demalerin, which means the painter for male and the painter for women. So here I can see that actually they are doing their own works and I just be the facilitator to ensure that they are doing their learning progress. And then, um, because I noticed that students are really interested in games, hence I came up with an idea to create a digital escape room for the students. So this idea came from um, a television series where I can see that, so because in the escape room, they, we will be trapped inside a room. So you have to solve the clues and the riddle inside the escape room 
in order so that you can escape from this room. But because they are doing online learning, of course, doing physical escape room is, is not doable. So that's why I created digital escape room for my students. Here, I use the platform of Google Sites as the, as the main of this escape room. And then I also use Google platform and Google form as well, so that when they enter the game Google site, they will read all the clues and they will play the games. They will, and there will be five platforms. So they have to solve each platform in order to go out from the Google, from this escape room. Okay, so it won't take too long. Usually it, it takes around maybe a one hour to solve all the riddles and all the clues. Okay, and then, the effect of using digital escape room is I can see that my students are really interested in games. So this is some of the feedback that I received when I did digital escape room. Uh, I asked them if there are any improvement and also feedback that they wish to add in this project. And some of them said that it's already perfect. And that is wonderful. A student told me that means that is already wonderful. And then a student also said that I might upgrade the escape room to more challenging and in fact I would rather play games like this than flashcard. So I guess you should offer us something interesting like this more often in the future. So I believe that this is like a calling for me to introduce more activities like this in my classroom when I have the chance to because I can see that uh, they are interested in this, they love to solve the problems, they love to solve the riddles so that they are actually doing learning and for them using flashcard is quite mainstream or maybe a little bit of uh, monotonous so they think that this activity can put interest to get their interest to learn German language and then other students say for me it is interesting but a little stressful which I find it is okay because we are still in learning progress of course it will be a little stressful for some students and then the, the next one is a student said, Ich denke, wir müssen diese Art von Aktivitäten häufiger durchführen. That's been, I believe that we should do more activity like this in the future. So that's why I believe that by implementing these activities, I think the students are not only participating, but they also find that German language and this activity is more engaging. Okay, so this is the about the problems arises for number one. And then the second problems that arises during practicum is, um, as I mentioned earlier, that I find it's difficult to build rapport with the students to create the bond, as um, Frau Fatiha said, and maybe to get to know them personally, it was quite difficult. So how did I do this? I provide trivial question of the day before classes, and this classes is doesn't really related to education. Sometimes it could be a random question that I can think of. And why did I do this? Because it helped me to get to know my students better. So that I can get to know what are their passion, what are their interests, and what are their skills. Because sometimes when I do this, uh, there are also skills and talent that, that I didn't know my students can do. I remember one time a student told me that he can create online music sheet where I feel like okay that is like a talent that I didn't know my students can do. So this is a few example of a section Frager des Tages. Usually I will do this uh, during online classes at the first five minutes while waiting for other students to come in. So I will ask them okay this is unser the Frager des Tages. I want you to answer them. So the first is what is all the Lieblings apps here? which means what is your favorite apps? And then I will answer first, for me is Spotify. And then as you can see, the students slowly get, uh, is getting more answer from the students. Some answer Netflix, some answer Facebook, some answer Spotify, Twitter, and many other things. And some others say Discord. And then the next, uh, other time also, what is Tanya Hobi? This is for Form 1. So the form one student, I will ask a really a, an easy question. For me, I answer Marlin, which means painting. And then other students answer Lizen and Music Horan, Tansen, and Jorgen. And there are also students that answer with full sentences where I feel like, okay, she, she or he is making effort. For example, Akil Amisha wrote, my hobby is Fussball Spielen, which is already good for him for a beginner's uh, that is learning German language. Okay, so that is enough about the best practices. 
Now I will continue on to the advantages of using games in virtual classroom. First, as you can see, it, despite the curriculum, I think using of games in virtual classroom can increase students' participation. As you can see, the students are really engaged, really interested, and they are eager to do more. And then, not only that, you can also challenge students' thinking skills. As you can see that when you are doing games, we don't only give a, a knowledge, but we ask them to think outside the, outside of the box. So they have to, to create something that might be challenging their own thinking ability so that they can produce more. And then last but not least, it can also trigger positive emotion, um, such as curiosity. So they are really curious about it. And they can also be really optimist because as you know, playing game is not easy. And it can be challenging sometimes, but I believe that despite the challenges, I think my students were really optimist about it. And this all can I can see that they are always eager to try again and again. And last but not least, also creativity. So what are the comments and reflections during my practicum? Um, among, along the time that I did my practicum, I realized that feedbacks are really important in order to improve myself. So what I did during my practicum is after each class, I will ask feedback from my mentor and also from my colleagues and also from my lecturers. So I will ask them what can I improve, what, can, what should be included in my lesson plan and what should not be not included and then sometimes I also ask my students are they really learning are they do they find that this material is too difficult for them or do they find that this game is can interest them but and then of course there are some a few answers that I have to um, to weigh down the choices and options so that I can provide a class that is um, suit for everyone and then the second one, this is also I learned this in a hard way that less is more. So as you can see that you can, of course, you can include as many technology and practices as you want. But sometimes uh, it doesn't have to be everything. Sometimes you, you have to choose the one that matters to you, the one that it matters to your student as well. And you also have to think of the, um, the situation, the objective, the learning objective that's the, does this technology, does this app, does this game fit in your learning objective or not? So that's why I think um, you can include as many technology as you want, but of course you have to choose the one that matters to you. So too many technology can also become a distractor, not only for you as a teacher, but also for the students. And then last but not least, uh, but last but not least, I also believe that interactive games can promote engaging learning environment. So I can see that when you did games, uh, I'm not the only one who do the talking. I will be the one that will be the facilitator. I am there to guide my students if it is correct or if they can do it and or if, if they can do it or not. So, and then the student will do a lot, most of the learning process. So those were my comments and reflections that I did during my, that I get during my practicum. So to conclude, I believe that in order to get the best practices uh, in teaching in the classroom, I believe that we as a teacher should take students' interests and skills into the matters, which means I believe that we should get to know our students. What do they like? What do they don't like? What do they find interesting? And what do they don't find interesting? And also their skills, because as you know, students our students, the young students now, they are very talented. They have skills that we did, didn't even know. And then, of course, with the student interest and skill, we also have to implement the teacher's knowledge of the pedagogical knowledge, of the content knowledge, as well as their ability to adapt to new things. And then, when we combine this together, we can promote the um, engaging learning environment, not only for us, but, on, but what matters for the students. So I believe that's all from me. And I would like to say thank you Shun for your era of me some kind. Of course, you can contact me if you have questions. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Anisraya, for the interesting sharing session. Maybe we can proceed with uh, Miss Fatin Fatiha. 
Okay, sure. All right. Can you see my slide? Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Anis, for sharing such a wonderful journey and experiences. It was really eye-opening for me. Okay, so now it's my turn to share with everyone uh, my experiences during my practicum. What are the practices that I did during my practicum about get your game on? So, lost kids. Yeah, let's go. So, hello, Iala. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, so as you can see, that is me. Okay, I'm Fatiha, Fatin Fatiha. Nice to meet all of you. But everyone can call me Teha for short. Okay, uh, as mentioned, I graduated from University of Putra, Malaysia, majoring in uh, Bachelor of Art, uh, German, Foreign Language, majoring in German Language and Mass Communication as my minor. And then um, I work at German Malaysian Institute right after I graduated, somewhere around 2015. And then I did my part-time job uh, at another two universities, uh, University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Utah, and also Quite short, but I did my uh, part-time there teaching German at University of Malaysia Pahang, UMP. And so I can say that I have more than five years teaching experience. And why German is the question that I get a lot. A lot of people ask me like, why German? Why not French? Why not other languages? So um, during high school, I was in boarding school in KL. So I learned Arabic. Okay. I'm just, I'm like, okay, Arabic is okay. And then I learn other languages such as uh, Japanese and now a little bit of Korean, okay, uh, on my own. So at that moment, I decided to learn another language and I want to try something different uh, where it's kind of like rare to learn people learn German. At that moment, German here in Malaysia. So I decided at that moment, I was like, okay, it's either French or German, French or German. So I think, okay, why don't I give it a try and learn German? Okay, and I think I have made the best decision in my life. Okay, now let's continue about my school, okay? Overview of the school. This is where I did my practicum. So it is called Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Agama Putrajaya, as you can see in the picture. So it is located in Putrajaya, Presid 11. Um, I can say that it is nearby the city. Uh, it's not that big. It's not that small. It is just nice. And a little bit about my school. So again, the name of my school is SMK Agama Putra Jaya or we call it as Sma Putra. Uh, I was monitored by Puan Raja Nurul Ain Nawaria, Binti Raja Bada Kozaman. So that is her. Okay, the one in maroon, very beautiful, very talented. She's the one who helped me beside my friends and my lecturers. She's the one who helped me a lot during my uh, practicum. She's the, uh, she's the one who guided me, who, the one who um, helped me to improve my uh, teaching lesson, my lesson plan, my activities of the day and everything. I think without them, I could not be where I am right now. Okay, so uh, I decided to go to SMK Agama Putrajaya first because it is in Kuala Lumpur, it is nearby. And then I want to be in a different environment. Okay, before this, as I mentioned, uh, during my high school from Form 1 to Form 5 or from 13 to 15, uh, 17 years old, I was in a boarding school in KL, Kuala Lumpur. So, okay, I've been in that environment and then I further my Form 6 in one of the daily school in Ampang. So I've been in daily school environment. So now I wanted to go to a different environment, which is a school that emphasized religious education, okay, such as memorizing Quran. So I want to be in that different environment where the students focusing on not only all the subjects, uh, all the main subject, but they also focusing on other thing, which is memorizing Quran. Okay, so um, uh, Puan Raja, assigned me to teach three classes. So one from uh, Form 1, another two from Form 3. At that moment, if I'm not mistaken, the Form 5 are already busy preparing for their examinations. And Frau Raja take over some of Form 1 and some of the, all the Form 2s. Okay, so um, I teach one Janatul Adni and three Janatul Adni and three Janatul Kut. That is the name of the class. Uh, so I can see there are different backgrounds uh, for the form one students we have to be very basic because they have like a little bit of knowledge or i can say like zero knowledge while the form three students they have a little bit of knowledge because they have learned german for 
two and a half years, two to three years like that. Okay, so I have to go for a different approach. <clears throat> So these are the knowledge that I gained during IPG that I have to apply on my uh, during my practicum. Okay, of course we know that uh, it is important to apply 21st century learning. Okay, such as collaborative, critical thinking, and creativity. Collaborative, like teamwork. You have to make sure uh, if you want to plan anything, if you want to do your lesson plan, you have to make sure they are teamwork. They can collaborate not only among students but also among between students and teachers. Okay, critical thinking. Okay, we have to decide, oh, is it like too easy? Is it like too difficult? Or is it like, oh, they're going to use their brain. They're going to think critically. Okay, I can do this. I can solve this and everything. And of course, creativity. We don't want them to be really stressful and leave out all the creativity. We want them to be cre as creative as they can. And then fun learning. Yes, what is learning if we do not having fun, right? So it is important for us to apply something fun in our learning. For example, playing games, right? Of course, it's always fun playing games. And I also uh, show some videos to them, okay, during my Vorbereitung phase or preparation phase, you know, okay, Vorbereitung phase. So usually we, I show pictures, I show some videos, okay, from YouTube. Or for us, if you want to teach German language, we can show from other platforms such as Deutsche Welle. So Deutsche Welle is one of the websites where we can find a lot of information about Germany, about the politics, about the cultures, about the people and everything. It's in English or it's in German, but it's really easy for those who learn German to understand. Okay. And of course, I have to apply the values and the ethics to the students, how important it is to be punctual. Okay. We have to teach them. Okay. Um, even though you learn online, even though you are at home, I know you can turn on your computer, you can work anytime, but you have to be punctual to come to class. Okay, because some of them, like, we understand that maybe they face problems such as slow internet connection and everything, but if they can, try to be punctual, okay? And then I have to teach them respect. They have to respect the teachers. If the teachers ask questions, <clears throat> they have to answer or they have to at least... Um, give some feedback and everything and they have to also respect their friends where anytime their friends um give answer respond to each other they have to respect it they cannot like oh you do a silly mistake you're not smart and everything <clears throat> it's not it's not nice right and then lastly i have to apply courage i have to tell them it's okay it's okay to make mistake because one of the problem that uh based on my past experience one of the problem is that the students are really afraid to make mistakes. They're afraid they make mistakes in pronunciation. They're afraid of making mistakes in grammar. So we want to make we want to tell them that it's okay to make mistakes because we always learn from mistakes because we are not perfect, right? We are not perfect. So we have to tell them, we have to motivate them. It's okay. Don't be, don't be scared. Try. If you don't try, you don't know, right? Okay, so that is the thing that I teach, I apply to my students. <clears throat> Now, let me continue with the materials that I used during my practicum. Uh, as mentioned, it was not easy, it was not an easy journey because, okay, usually we prepare slides and we just like teach and I realized that I'm the one who do all the talking. It's like one-way communication, okay? And I was like, no, I decided to discuss with my mentor. I decided to discuss with my friends, my colleague, my uh, lecturer. I asked them, is it okay if I do this? I found this. Okay, do you know that? Do you know any website that I can do this? Any games or anything? So we discussed with each other and then I decided to apply a few uh, games into my um, classroom so that I, I, in order for me to, in order for the students to respond better to engage with me, okay, and participate in class. So, uh, some of the activities uh, that I do, I find online is crossword puzzles, okay, but bear in mind, it's quite difficult for me to find crossword puzzles, first, in German language, and second, that fit with their level, okay. So, luckily, uh, after this, this brainstorming session with my friends, I found this one website uh, online where we can do our own crossword puzzles, Okay, so for example, uh, they learn about foods, yeah, foods. So, okay, we know that, okay, the topic is food, essence, okay? So, uh, as a teacher, we have 
to decide, okay, what question, what, what are the questions that we want to write, and then what are the answers, and then we just key in everything, and the, the, the website going to generate the crossword puzzles, and we can download as PDF, or we can print it out, so it's quite easy. Okay, and uh, sometimes I just insert all this PDF into Jamboard because I prefer to do it in, uh, on Jamboard because we can see and we can monitor at the same time so everyone can interact at the same time. Okay, just paste on Jamboard so they can uh, write, they can type everything there so we can check it together. And then second, same like Anis, we did puzzle. As usual, we have, uh, we, I found this website. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that book widget okay where we can generate our own puzzle okay it's either your own pictures or you get your pictures from uh, google or everything okay you just download pictures and then uh insert the pictures and then they will generate the puzzle for you okay it depends uh what are your teaching goals you want them to do it individually or you want it to do in a group how many minutes do you want you want it like two minutes or you want it to be five minutes Okay, so they can generate the puzzle according to your uh, to your needs. For example, oh, I need only 10 pieces of puzzle. I need like uh, five pieces of puzzle, maybe six. Or maybe, oh, I want them to do in a group work. I want them to communicate. I want them to have a good teamwork. Maybe you can give like 30 or 50, 100 pieces of puzzles. Okay, and usually after I generated the puzzles, I usually... Um, download, upload it on Jamboard so they can rearrange the puzzles. Okay, <clears throat> so it's quite fun. And then of course, worksheets, we usually use worksheets. Sometimes I find it online and sometimes I do it on my own. <clears throat> and of course, bingo. We play bingo online um, because uh, bingo is one of the game that is good whenever they learn about numbers. For example, uh, we know that bingo is all about uh, 0 to 25. So if you want them to revise and memorize all the numbers, we can play bingo. And I uh, usually... Then only at that time, usually you can hear them, uh, their voice. Like, oh, okay, you are here, finally, good, okay? And then lastly, <clears throat> uh, one of the games uh, that I invited based on another games that I found online and from another teacher's experiences is Snake and Ladder. So I managed to uh, play this game when I went to school, I think for the final two to the final two to three weeks if i'm not mistaken so i finally get the, uh we can finally go to school and then only i think only like form one to form three students are there so okay i'm, I'm like good okay so i go to you can if you want to go uh if you want to do this you can buy this the the um game board i think from any bookstores or maybe mr diy okay so i bought this at mr diy i think around seven to ten sets of sing and ladder because number of students for each class is around 29 to 30 so there's a lot of students and then uh i printed that uh, i printed out i did uh i already prepared sets of questions maybe like 30 40 set of question very easy question it's like a revision from what have they learned okay for example like from one okay for example they already learned like seven topics so you just pick any uh just create any uh, question that related to the seven topics. For example, alphabet. Okay, lays and Z, A, B, Z. Please read alphabet from A to Z. It is easy if you have to uh, read it in English or in Bahasa. But in German, hmm. some of them, they cannot even remember. Oh, what is J in German? Uh, J, J, uh, J. No, no, it's not J, it's J. Okay, so some of them, they can memorize it good, like A, B, C, D, A, F, G, they can even sing it. But some of them, um, A, A, B, C, you know. So it's it's actually good for them to do some revision and memorize, oh, I'm not good at this. Okay, and then for Form 3, same like Form 3, because they have learned for two and a half years and three years. So I can do a lot of topics. I can cover a lot of topics. So I want to see whether or not are they really remember do they really remember what have they learned since Form 1, since Form 2, or maybe since the beginning of the year, okay? And based on my experience, I can see that some of them, they can remember easily. Some of them, they don't even know simple, uh, simple question. For example, like sometimes I ask, what is Selamat Pagi or Good Morning of Deutsch in German? So someone will be like, oh, sorry, Frau, um, I don't remember. 
Okay, so from there, we can see that, oh, okay, you some of the students cannot remember even simple things, so we need to um, focus on that. Okay, focus on that student. We can realize, okay, I have to focus on this student because this student is still weak. Okay, uh, maybe he cannot uh, speak properly, he cannot memorize, he cannot even uh, remember numbers 1 until 10, so we have to focus on them. Oh, and then we can realize that, oh, this student is good. Okay. They did their homework. They did all the job. They they studied at home. So I know, okay, uh, this person, okay, I can make sure that, okay, I don't have to touch this person. Like, okay, you can focus on your own. I have to focus on other students. So that is one of my games that I created uh, during my practicum days, uh, sing and ladder. So it is, I prefer to do this face-to-face. Uh, -face. It is quite impossible to do it online because I think, if online they manage to find the answer, you know, because they can open all the tabs in the computer and then they can find the answer easily. Oh, what is good morning? Just type good morning in German. So they're like, oh, far I know. But if uh, face to face, maybe they have problem like, oh my God, I don't know. Oh, there's no dictionary with me. Oh my God, what is this? Okay. So that is one of the game that I applied. So what are the impact of the games? We continue with the impact of the games. Uh, when I... We played a lot of games in classroom. I can see that we had a better engagement, okay, with the students. As a teacher, I had a better engagement with the students. The student can communicate with me, like, Frau, is it correct? Frau, uh, why do you say that I'm wrong? Okay, so I have to explain to them, oh, of course, this is this is how you see it. And, oh, and then they're like, oh, okay, I thought I have to say that because according to Google Translate or any uh, regarding the name, I'll say, okay, we, we can correct them, right? And then uh, better engagement with technologies. Of course, some of the teachers, even the students, because this is a new norm for us, okay? When everything, suddenly we have to go online, we have to discover, okay, how can we do class online? WhatsApp, Telegram, Google Google Meet, what is that? Zoom, we have to pay, you know? it's, it's It was totally chaotic, I can see, right? So, um, because we we putting our efforts, so... I think that the students are putting their efforts to, to you know, engage with it, all the technologies. And that sharpens memory. Of course, um, we cannot do like one-way teaching. It doesn't work that way. And I think that uh, games help them, help them to improve their memories. They can remember well and better. And then encourage growth. What I mean by encourage growth is, you know, that whenever they play games, they're going to lose or they're going to make mistakes. So... We tell them it's okay if you lose we can play again it's okay if you do mistake you can you can do it again you can improve yourself doesn't matter because we learn from making mistakes so they know that oh this is okay because i think i believe that the students from the age of 13 to 17 they are very vulnerable so they are maybe mentally they can be like very easy very sensitive Right? If they do miss it, they're like, no, no, thanks. I'm done. I don't want to learn anything. Or maybe like, oh, this is good. I'm uh, Our teacher is encouraging me to um, keep on talking, keep on listening, keep on doing. Okay? So we have to make sure that we as a teacher support them, motivate them. It's okay. So at the same moment, I believe that if we motivate and support them, they're going to be, they have going to be a, pos um, they're going to be positive in their life. Right? And of, of course, uh, I don't want people, other people to say, uh, this class or this teacher only play games. My student doesn't learn anything. This doesn't help my student to study. My, my, uh, sorry, my student, my child is going to fail the exam because this teacher always play with games. We don't want that. We make sure whenever we play games or whenever we apply games in our classroom, we're going to make sure that it promotes analytical thinking. So it's just not just playing. We know that based on there's a hundreds of research saying that uh, playing games in classroom helps in analytical thinking, critical thinking, and also problem solving. Of course, because they have to think. Okay, not only they have to think how to solve the game, but they also have to think how to, you know, what what I meant because I have to speak in German. Okay, now, of course, I want to promote teamwork. And lastly, uh, boost self-confidence. Uh, no, sorry, I have two points. Okay, they can boost their self-confidence. Okay, they try, uh, they try to communicate, they know, oh, I'm doing it right, I get it right, wow, I did not get that, wow. Okay, and of course, as a teacher, it's easier to achieve our learning target, right? Because, okay, we want to, okay, our aim, for example, so that the student can read 1 until 
20, for example. And by games, maybe, wow, they, they can not only read the numbers, but they can only write the numbers properly. So it's easier to achieve our learning goal. Next, so uh, these are my feedbacks uh, based on my experience. So as you can see, the up there is all the positive feedback and the down below, the tree down below is all the negative. So I can see that the students are active in classroom. Okay, if we teach normally, just show slide, just teach, all the, doing all the exercise, they are very passive, they like not interested. But once I apply games, a little bit of games in my classroom, you can see that they are active and then they can memorize better. Okay, it helps to memorize all what have, they have learned better. And then you can get better reports with the students. The students started to, you know, form these kind of bonds because they started to talk to you like, Frau, this is fun. I like this. Can you do this some more? Like Miss Anis just said just now, right? So the students give positive feedback and they think that, Frau, I think that I wanted to play something else. Is it like, okay? And I'm like, sure. Do you like to play that? Yeah, I like to play that. So slowly we started to uh, build. Uh, this bond with them so we can understand and help them better. And then, um, of course, one good thing is we can combine all the skills, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. And lastly, uh, one, of the, another, one of the good thing is better teamwork and collaboration because, as I mentioned, my school is a religious school, so maybe the, the boys and the girls doesn't work together very well. So I ask them to work together even though they, they don't have to, you know, uh, cross the line, but they can still work together. We have to show them that you can still work together in different genders without, you know, crossing any lines. So that is very important value that we have to teach. And then the negative part, of course, we need as a teacher is very tiring because you need a lot of time to prepare the materials. You have to keep on looking what are the what are the websites, which website that you can use to find a suitable activity, suitable game for them. And then it is quite difficult to find and make fun online activities. Of course, they are thousands, maybe millions of German uh, activities or worksheets or, you know, games online, but it doesn't, you know, really fit with our, the, the level of our students. So sometimes you have to do on your own, like quizzes, even though there's a thousand question in quizzes, but I have to make it on my own in order to, you know, um, depends on the, we, I have to refer to the topic, I have to refer to the level of my students and everything. And lastly, I know it, uh, it sounds kind of bad, but uh, sometimes I need to mix a language, okay? Even though we are, we have been warned not to use any other languages other than German language, but sometimes because we have we have told them so many times, they still don't understand. I have to mix the language, Malay. I have to explain in German after so many, you know, gestures, uh, uh, and everything. So they still do not understand. So I have, lastly, I have to uh, explain in Bahasa. So there's like, oh, now I understand. Okay, so it's quite challenging uh, for me, lah, for us. Okay, and I think that's all for me. And this is my conclusion. I think it can be tiring. It can be very challenging, especially at in this era where everything changed. We have to use all the technology. We have to, you know, really depends on the students mentally, physically. So I think as a teacher, no matter what, we must always be ready, okay, to ensure that we can give the best to our students. Even though it's tiring, it's like challenging, do they, are they going to like it or not? Are, is this easy or not? We have to make sure that we can give the best to our uh, students. Because this is the same like in line with the national education philosophy where lifelong learning is important, not only for the student, but also for us as a teacher. Okay, no matter how old are we, maybe we are still young, uh, you are still young, you are a young teacher, that's okay. But it's okay, it doesn't matter what your age is, as long as we have the spirit to teach the teacher, I think that we're going to do everything that we could to help the student. So, yeah, ich denke, das ist alles von mir. Danke schön, terima kasih, und thank you. Danke schön, Miss Fatin Fateha. And I would like to thank both of our panels for today. Uh, the sharing session uh, is so interesting, and I totally agree with what they have shared. I, as their supervising lecturer, I could see their tremendous improvements during their practicum days. And I, I couldn't agree more that by implementing games uh, in the lesson, the students participated more and they can give good responses during the lesson. And I can say that I am so proud of both of them. 
and um, they could make all the lessons fun and they have created a good rapport with all the students. And we have come to the end of uh, our forum for today and we hope that uh, you all um, have gained some insights on the matter and enjoyed the session. And we wish to thank our speakers for spending their precious time with us on this platform. Thank you for attending this session. I would like uh, to thank the Educational Technology Division, MOE, for the platform and our lovely repertoires. So please do not forget our next series will be held uh, next week on the 13th of September, Wednesday, and it will, it will be live at the same time, 10 a.m. Malaysian time. Until then, goodbye from Malaysia. Cheers.